All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to this video where we're going to run through missing cost basis warnings, how they work and how you can troubleshoot them within your tax reports. So here we're on the review step and you can see I have a clean set of data with no missing cost basis warnings right now. I've imported um, transaction history from a variety of exchanges and wallets um, and you can see right now no missing cost basis warnings are being triggered. So what I want to do is recreate one to kind of demonstrate how this actually works. So what I've done is I've created a kind of fictitious trade where I'm trading one Bitcoin for nine Ethereum. And I'm exporting that to import into the application. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, let's say that's a real trade I made during the year. <clears throat> so let's import that transaction. There's the CSV file that I created. Quickly label what assets they were <clears throat> and import that into the system. Cool. So now we're saying, hey, on January 2nd, 2021, I traded one Bitcoin for nine Ethereum. Well, what's, what is this going to do? This is going to flag as a missing cost basis because we haven't actually told the system how we initially acquired that one Bitcoin, right? Just it showing up in your transaction history isn't enough to necessarily set your cost basis. <clears throat> so it, when I go to review this, you can see, yep, this is a, a missing cost basis transaction. We don't know what the cost basis for that one Bitcoin was. Um, you can see this is having a potential report impact up to $20,000, right? So if I left this missing cost basis for this trade as zero and didn't figure out my cost basis, it could be inflating my total gains by up to $20,000, right? Depending on the, that cost basis of the one Bitcoin. Now, because I had other transaction history, right? There's actually some in there um, in my balance, right? It's not that full one because I, I had other uh, transaction history. But again, for this example, we're essentially trying to hunt down X amount of Bitcoin with missing cost basis. <clears throat> so what are the most common um, reasons this happens? And this is all discussed in our help guide. And the 99% of the time these missing cost base come because not all of your data, your transaction history has been imported into the platform. And so What's the most common thing is you haven't imported from all of your exchanges, right? Because if let's say there's a buy of Bitcoin on one exchange that you haven't imported and there's a sell on a different platform, that buy of Bitcoin is what would initially set your cost basis. And if you haven't imported that, of course, you're going to trigger a missing cost basis. So let's demonstrate this a little bit more with the software. So if I go back to the import step, just before making this video, I also imported just a simple deposit of one Bitcoin. <clears throat> Remember, deposits are not taxable events. They're treated as self wallet transfers. So me depositing Bitcoin into one of my wallets from another wallet isn't a taxable event. But what if this deposit was actually a gift from a friend or income that I received from payment from goods or service, right? That actually is taxable and that would set a cost basis. And essentially that would show CryptoTrader.tax and CoinLedger what your cost basis for that one Bitcoin potentially were. So for this example, let's say I someone paid me one Bitcoin um, for doing a job and the next day, right, I traded that one Bitcoin for Ethereum. If this is just marked as a deposit, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's not going to set cost basis. But if you classify it appropriately, here we're going to go to the classify step. Here it is in that deposit. If we classify that as its appropriate income, right, that I, that I mentioned, I received income from doing a job. Let's save that down. Now we can see, just I'll show you quick, that's classified as income. We see the trade. Now let's go back to the review tab. Boom. There's no more missing cost basis warning. Again, why? Because you've shown the system how you originally acquired that one Bitcoin. Just a simple deposit is not enough to show that. <clears throat> so let's go through another example here quickly. Um, let me delete that um, deposit. Cool. So now we just have the trade. Remember the fictitious trade of one Bitcoin for nine Ethereum and the, the missing cost basis should be back. Correct. 
Okay, we still don't know how we acquired that one Bitcoin. Well, what if we just hadn't imported some data from another exchange? So let me create another fictitious trade. What if before this date on a different exchange, we'll call it David's exchange, what if I had actually traded for one Bitcoin and I traded US dollars of let's say $30,000 for one Bitcoin? <clears throat> Again, if I filled this out correctly, download it as a CSV file. <clears throat> this does show, again, CryptoTrader.tax, how I originally acquired that one Bitcoin, right? I bought it the day before on a different exchange. So again, if I don't import that and I just have this trade, it's going to flag as, hey, we, we don't know how you acquired this one Bitcoin. We can't set the cost basis for it. Did you earn it as income? Did you trade for it, etc.? So what happens now if we import the file that I just downloaded? Let's see. Hopefully I filled it out all correctly. Quickly label. Yes, it's Bitcoin. <clears throat> there it is. Now we see the trade of 30,000 US dollars for one Bitcoin the day before. What's that going to do? That's going to set the cost basis for this trade. So this cost basis for this Bitcoin is now $30,000. So when we trade it for Ethereum, it's, it's going to trigger a smaller gain than if the cost basis was $0. If we go back to the tab, the missing cost basis, of course, is gone. One other thing I do want to show, let's quickly delete that transaction that I just imported here. There we go. Missing cost basis warning is back. Let's actually drill into the tax reports tab. <clears throat> so here we can see my realized gains for the year. Um, they definitely jumped up on that January date. Um, Anyways, what we can do also is on the other tab here, we can drill into the misses, missing basis reconciliation. And it's actually going to show us, again, how much that missing cost basis from that Bitcoin, the total amount of this asset that cost basis data was missing for, <clears throat> is impacting my capital gains or losses by, right, up to $20,000. And by finding and tracking down that basis, we essentially, you know, eliminate this entry in your report. Um, much more details, again, in our complete help guide here with a bunch of examples, but hopefully this video was helpful to understand how missing costs basis come up and how to troubleshoot them. Again, the most common thing is you didn't import all of your data from all of your platforms. And so make sure to do that. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our team. Thanks, guys.